Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on understanding and identifying multicollinearity using SPSS. Multicollinearity is when two variables are highly correlated. And oftentimes in counseling research, this construct is of interest to us when we're conducting a regression. So taking a look at the fictitious data I have loaded in the data editor in SPSS, you can see I have an ID variable, and then I have five predictor variables, depression, anxiety, substance use, panic, and hopelessness, and one dependent variable, uh, functioning. So before we get to the stage of running any analyses, we can take a look at these variables and see potential problems. For example, between anxiety and panic, we would expect that there could be a high correlation, a high positive correlation between these two constructs. They are different. Anxiety is distinct from panic, but oftentimes we see overlap. If a participant suffers from anxiety, there's a higher probability that they would suffer from panic. And the opposite is true as well. And the same thing could occur with hopelessness. We think of hopelessness oftentimes as a symptom of depression. So again, if a participant has a high degree of hopelessness on a measurement, we would think it would be likely there would be a high score on a depression inventory. Now we'll test for multicollinearity between all the variables, but of particular interest would be the anxiety and panic and the depression and hopelessness. So there are two different ways I'm going to look at trying to determine if we have multicollinearity. The first I'm going to go to analyze and then correlate and bivariate. And I'm going to load in just the predictor variables. So depression, anxiety, substance use, panic, and hopelessness. Hit OK and run this analysis. And this provides the correlation between all the different pairs of predictor variables. And we can see that between anxiety and panic, we have a 0.637. And between hopelessness and depression, we have a 0.938. Now, as is the case with many statistics, there's no definitive agreed upon value when interpreting correlations in terms of what's equal to multicollinearity and what's not. Popular cutoff scores, though, would be 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and 0.9. So let's say in this case we use 0 0.7. The depression and hopelessness, those two variables, they're greater than 0 0.9. They correlate at 0 0.938. And the next highest correlation, next strongest correlation, would be anxiety and panic at 0.637. So looking at this first table, uh, the most concern we would have would be between depression and hopelessness. And we'd want to keep an eye on the relationship between anxiety and panic. So then going back in, go to analyze, regression, and linear. Now of interest here is not all the output from linear regression, but rather just looking at multicollinearity. So I'm going to load functioning as the dependent and then all the other predictor variables into independent, uh, the independent list box. And if this were, if I was going to complete the linear regression, there's actually a lot of things I would do. Uh, but here I'm just going to um, note the collinearity diagnostics. I want them to be in the output. And we can bring those up from statistics and I'm going to uncheck estimates, uncheck model fit, and just check off collinearity diagnostics. So a very narrow view as to what's going on with these variables, just focused in on potential multicollinearity issues. So I click OK. And we can see we have collinear diagnostics down here in the bottom table. Uh, but of the most interest are going to be these 
coefficients. And you can see they're referred to here as collinearity statistics, and there's two of them. One is named tolerance, and one is variance inflation factor, or VIF. The variance inflation factor is the reciprocal of tolerance. So if I were to take this table and copy it and move over to Excel and then paste it here, we can see we have the tolerance values and the variance inflation factor values. So I'm going to copy the tolerance values and then move over here to this table I've built uh, to the left under tolerance and I'm going to paste the number and formatting and you can see it automatically populated the correct variance inflation factor that corresponds to what we have here in SPSS. And If you look at the function for this you can see I've included the if error function uh, so that I won't have an error appear when the tolerance is empty. Uh, but the point of interest here is that it's 1 divided by the tolerance. Right? So it's the reciprocal. And one of the reasons I'm showing you this is because it's important to understand when looking at the cutoffs for tolerance and variant, variance inflation factor. Uh, because just like there's no agreed upon cutoff for correlations, correlation values, there is no one agreed set of cutoff values for tolerance and variance inflation factors. But if I were to take some of the more popular ones here, for example, in tolerance, a popular cutoff is that the value needs to be greater than 0.1. So anything less than 0.1 would be indicative of multicollinearity. So if I enter that in, we can see the corresponding variance inflation factor is equal to 10. In fact, that is one of the rules, one of the guidelines would be a tolerance less than 0.1 is worrisome or a variance inflation factor greater than 10 could be problematic. Another common tolerance cutoff is 0.2. And you can see that changes the variance inflation factor to 5. These are the two most common guidelines, the 0.1 and 10 and the 0.2 and 5. There are others as well. Uh, there are variance inflation factor cutoffs of 4 and 3. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to take a look at these two guidelines, the 0.1 and 10 and the 0.2 and 5. So moving back to SPSS, to the output, if we were to evaluate these predictor variables based on what we know now about the uh, potential cutoff values, the anxiety and the panic predictor variables do not appear to be problematic. If we remember their correlation, uh, 0.637, and then looking at the tolerance and variance inflation factor, both variance inflation factors here below 3. This one's below 2 for panic. So whether we're using the cutoff of 10 or 5 for variance inflation factor, we would be good here uh, with these variables. We would continue on and not worry about multicollinearity. Now the depression and hopelessness variables, uh, that's a little bit different. Now technically under the 0.1 and 10 rule, of course they meet that rule. We have 0 0.110, 0 0.112, and 9 and 8.8. .8. Uh, for the variance inflation factors. However, if we take that and then also add into it what we know about the correlation, right, it's a strong positive correlation, 0.938, between the depression and hopelessness variables. With all that uh, taken together, we would probably say here that we do have multicollinearity. So under the 0.2 and 5 rule, uh, 0.2 for the tolerance and 5 for the variance inflation factor, uh, these two variables would be uh, problematic. And even though we were using the uh, 0.7 
correlation value is a cutoff, even if we used 0.9, the depression and hopelessness correlation is too high to meet that rule. So in this case, we would probably uh, decide to drop one of these predictor variables, uh, either depression or hopelessness, depending on uh, the structure of our study. So let's say that we decided that we were going to leave out the hopelessness uh, variable. We go back to the data editor, and of course we can run this analysis from the output viewer as well. Go back to regression linear, and we'll remove hopelessness as a variable. And of course all the other settings are saved, and that's just the collinear uh, diagnostics that are checked off. And you can see now with hopelessness not in the model, not entered as a predictor, we can see that all the variance inflation factors are within acceptable levels, and of course the tolerance levels are as well. I hope you found this video on understanding and identifying multicollinearity to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.